I woke up today to the beautiful news that the one and only Igloo Ghost has a new album out today, his first since 2017's Neo Wax Bloom. Despite his career still being very young, Igloo Ghost already has a very exciting catalog, and he also kind of holds a bit of a special spot for me personally, because his 2015 EP Chinese New Year was one of the first electronic projects I really ever got into. You know, I was only 14 at the time that thing came out, and prior to really 2015 in general, like, I really only listened to rap music. Music, but then in 2015 I kind of started to expand and explore more genres and Chinese New Year was pretty much the first electronic thing I really dove into which broadened my horizons to artists like Aphex Twin After and Blank Mass and other people like that. I feel like we haven't heard from Igloo Ghost in so long though like those two EPs he dropped back in 2018 I think it was those are really the last like full-length projects that I can really remember him dropping I mean unless I really miss something I'm pretty sure there's been nothing major from him since then. I know for sure he hasn't dropped an album since Neo Wax Bloom, so this is definitely a pretty big deal here, and I am super hyped to hear it, because Neo Wax Bloom, still a fantastic record. One of the most vibrant, zany, and character-filled electronic music releases of the 2010s, in my opinion. The guy just has the most bubbly, trippy, insane music imaginable, and I expect this album over here to be no different, although maybe that's a bit of a mistake on my part. Maybe I should actually be expecting him to go a totally new direction that I haven't heard from him, but I guess this is just where I have to stop talking and just listen to the record. So here we go. Track one on this thing is called uh, Disc Initiate. I'm expecting things to just explode soon, you know? I don't know if it'll just stay more lavish and pretty and slow and dramatic for the whole time, but I, I feel like it's leading somewhere and it maybe it'll explode starting with track two. It is quite beautiful though, you know? I can't say I'm not already enjoying what I'm hearing. And of course those kind of cranking, winding noises in the background are giving it a more electronic flair than if it was just these naturalistic elements. I was wrong, we didn't really get any type of explosion in the track there, you know, I was kind of expecting all these insane synths to just burst through and for the record to really pull a hardcore switch between that really beautiful violin that was playing and then to all of a sudden just go into this crazy wonky like UK bass style song. But it maintained its posture and elegance and beauty for the entire time. And so as an intro, it definitely worked for me, it has me more sucked in to the world of the album already, but I am kind of expecting things to go nuts now on track two, which is called uh, Pure Gray Circle. The string is back, but I think it's about to be used in a different context. There we go. Beethoven could never, man. Mozart, he, he's he's like, he, he wishes he could do this, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that time my prediction was right. Now that track is more what I expect from Ego Ghost. Not in the sense that, you know, I can compare that to anything he's ever done. Because I can't. That sounded so fresh and unique for him. I absolutely love that. The strings were back once again, sounding as lush and epic as ever. The woodwinds that were worked into the composition as well, they just sounded so, once again, graceful and majestic. I just loved the almost mythical sound it had. We had a little bit of rapping from someone who, I'm not sure who it is because there's no one credited, at least on the Apple Music version that I'm looking at, but it sounded like Mr. Yodi to me, or Mr. Yote, however you pronounce his name. But even if it's not him, it's someone who sounds exactly like him and they use similar, like, pitched down vocals. And also there was some singing from, again, I don't know who, but those backing vocals were gorgeous and just added such a ethereal energy to the song. And of course, man, there was those big, booming trap drums that I fucking love. And he used 
pretty sparingly throughout the track, but of course there was always such a satisfying payoff when they came in. The buildups were great. The entire progression of that song kept me on my toes the whole time. It felt like it was constantly flowing and morphing into something new, but you know, it still had those same elements the whole way through. Just, it was such a uh, continuously fluid composition and I was in love with it. So now I just want to see what he has to offer me next on track three, which is called the Sylph Fossil. <laughs> That song went through so many different phases. I, I felt like I listened to about six or seven songs there instead of one. One thing I can definitely compliment about the track as a whole though were the textures he brought to this thing. There were so many cool, creaky, squeaky, weird sounding elements that he managed to make go hard as fuck alongside again, some warped and booming drums. The whole track had a very spacey cosmic vibe. You know, Chinese New Year, the project I was talking about earlier that got me into Eagle Ghost stuff and on honestly, more so just electronic music in general. Igloo Ghost himself said the concept of that project was supposed to be about this like multi-dimensional worm or something that can like travel through space and time in different dimensions. And it's just us going through him on this wild journey as he's just rapidly traveling through all these weird multiverse worlds or some shit like that. It's, it's like pretty confusing, but that's just the general idea. But that's really what it sounds like when you listen to that project. And I've always just kept like sort of similar imagery in mind whenever I've listened to any of his subsequent music when it's just like this fast pace and rapidly changing and like the, your entire environment just seems to constantly change around you in the sonic sense and it's just really exhilarating being brought through all these colorful sonic worlds rapidly at once and you're really just hanging on really tightly just wondering what the fuck is gonna happen next i feel like i'm 14 years old again man and it's it's beautiful i'm absolutely loving this thing so far now we are on track four which is called light gutter featuring lola <laughs> Love that silky piano in the background. I think the two biggest differences I'm noticing from Neo Wax Bloom so far is first of all his use of the more orchestral elements. I feel like he really started introducing that on Clear Tame. He had a few songs with these really nice sweeping strings on there and these have kind of carried over onto this project but in a much larger quantity on this project it seems. And then the other thing is that Neo Wax Bloom for me was just this pure rush of dopamine and serotonin and it felt so happy and like excited. That album is kind of the musical equivalent of ecstasy so it's kind of hard to not be in a good mood when you're listening to it but this project over here is feeling a lot more melancholic and kind of wistful and reflective and atmospheric so far and I feel like that more melancholic sound is something that he really showcased first on his Steel Mogu EP from 2018 you know he kind of contrasted his two sides there and uh, I feel like he's kind of blending them on this loving the artistic evolution let's keep it moving track five is called Big Protector. <laughs> Oh my god, man, this song is fucking sick! That song made me feel like I died and then was reborn, reincarnated, and then like went to hell and then went to heaven and then went to like the Greek version of hell and then the Greek version of heaven and then the Roman version of hell. <laughs> the Roman. Yeah, no, I don't even know. I don't know. I just felt like I just went on a religious journey.
some spiritual fucking shit there, man. That was gorgeous. A lot of really pretty and unique sounds in there. In fact, I, I may be wrong, but I feel like he used a prepared piano on part of this song, and that just really added such a gorgeous flair. I love when people use that instrument because it is just so damn uniquely stunning. So even if it's not that, it's something that captures the same cleansing aura, so I was loving it. Heading into the second half of the album now, starting off with track six, which is called UI Birth featuring Baby. <laughs> This is zones you can't see. Two amazing songs I listened to just then. You can probably tell by my physical <laughs> dancing and reactions and what I'm doing in front of the camera while I'm listening to it. You can probably visually see that I'm really enjoying what I'm hearing. I just didn't really bother to say much about the two tracks because I feel like everything I could compliment about them is something I've already said about the album in general. The songs are majestic, elegant, orchestral, the textures have been fantastic, the progressions, the sonic world building, all of it has been continuously amazing. It's just I know I've already said all those things about this album Album, so I just don't want to keep repeating myself. So aside from any distinctly unique features that might be introduced on any of these next songs, I'll probably just let my, uh, you know, physical reaction do the talking for me mostly. I'm just gonna vibe out, man. It's all good. Track eight is called Amu. <laughs> This joint is called Soil Bolt. This music is just so well composed. I can't really think of many other artists who can take me on such a journey with every single song they put out. The final track has arrived and it is called Yellow Umbra. I'll tell you something else. This, this album has had a lot of imagery for me that feels like the natural world colliding with something more otherworldly and futuristic. That definitely plays out musically on this album with all these heavily digital elements colliding with these more holistic sounding instruments. So I've really been appreciating that aspect of the album as well. I feel like I just uh, kind of came back to Earth after being abducted by aliens and uh, doing things that I can never speak of again. <laughs> I really don't even trust myself to talk about electronic music enough to do justice to how great I felt that album was, you know? Uh, I like to talk about any and all music I enjoy, but I will admit there's certain genres where I'm a little better than others at really dissecting every little bit about the songs. I'm doing my best here, but I really just have to emphasize like how masterfully crafted that entire thing felt. I don't know how long he's been working on this particular album for, but it doesn't really surprise me that he's gone this long
song without releasing music because this sounds like the end result of lots of meticulous and delicate work. The mixing, the mastering, the arrangements, the guest features, just how everything was woven together. It just felt undeniably brilliant to me. Like this is a master of his craft and I loved every second of it. Man, we've been getting a lot of great music recently. I just really love that new Armand Hammer album and I still have to check out the new Shushu album who like, you know, I literally have them tattooed on my arm. They're one of my favorite bands of all time. I've just been waiting for the right opportunity to really savor it as much as possible, but I promise I will be giving you guys that video soon. I know some people have asked about it, but yeah, 2021 is really starting to heat up a little bit with these album releases and I'm loving it. So I'll just be reacting to tons of shit from here on out, hopefully, and hopefully it doesn't stop till the end of the year. So thank you guys as always for watching. Let me know what you thought about this new Igloo Ghost album down in the comment section below. Other than that, I guess I'll just see you guys next time.